the most interesting thing to me personally is the discovery of the reams and reams of digital code that is in, that's stored inside uh, DNA and transmitted in RNA. And th these are features that we think are best explained by an intelligent cause rather than a purely undirected process. So when we find information encoded in the DNA in, a, in this four character digital code that is, that's responsible for all the instructions in the cell, it's, an, it's a, the logical inference uh, and explanation to say that an intelligent uh, agent of some kind played a role in the origin of, that, of those living systems. Since the intelligent design movement is dedicated to the search for intentional design of living things, I think it's time to give it a little test. Can anyone out there locate a gene that is unambiguously designed? Here's my challenge. Give me the name of a gene in any animal or plant that you think is designed. No fair cheating, let's stick to sequences found in nature, not transgenics and only organisms we have some sequencing data on. I will then test your gene using homology and some other tools for two things. Homology and specific or unique function. For the purposes of our test, let's consider homology defined as 20% protein identity over more than 100 amino acids. That's 1 out of 20 amino acids at each position, or 0.05 probability, raised to at least a power of 20, or less than 1 in 1 times 10 raised to the power of 28 chance of being a coincidence. That's a pretty low probability. We'll test that your protein is specific for a certain function with OMIM database. We don't want some protein that is used lots of ways or it can't be part of an irreducibly complex structure. This shouldn't take you long. Feel free to throw out guesses. Leave the gene name in the comments and I'll post the results when I can. Dear Discovery Institute, so there you have it. You want to put forward intelligent design as a hypothesis in the scientific arena. That's fine. We have presented a cheap mechanism for you to provide evidence to support this. The genomes of about 180 life forms have already been sequenced. Yet you have not pointed to a single gene that you think shows signs of a non-evolutionary design. Please. We invite you to rock the foundations of evolutionary biology to its core. Simply provide evidence of a single gene from the billions of base pairs that have already been sequenced and that are scanned by drug companies and geneticists on a daily basis that you think display the property of a non-evolutionary origin. If there really were any weaknesses to evolution as the explanation of the information in DNA, the Discovery Institute could reveal them within months. One can only speculate at their masterly reluctance to examine the evidence over the last decade. So here is our advice to everyone who thinks that intelligent design is a valid hypothesis. Given that this would clearly be the single simplest method of demonstrating evidence supporting intelligent design, we strongly advocate that you all write to the Discovery Institute, encouraging them to examine the currently sequenced genome databases for a single gene that does not show an evolutionary heritage. This video was released on the 15th of May 2009. History awaits to record the first intelligent design advocate to point to a single gene that displays evidence of a non-evolutionary origin. I wish to thank the Discovery Institute, that's the hub of the intelligent design movement, for their replies to the video titled Challenging the Discovery Institute to Discover. As you may be aware, the video drew considerable attention and is currently the number three top-rated video of all time in the category of science and technology. I should briefly note here that the Discover Institute and related folks such as Illustria Media have formed for taking down videos with false DMCAs. If you want to play this game, Discover Institute, I suggest that you first watch the videos The Discover Institute vs. Copyright and, of course, Venom Fang X apologizes to the internets. One of their replies came directly from the Discover Institute from Casey Lutchkins and has subsequently just earned him the honour of being the topic of Why Do People Laugh at Creationists Part 30. 
The second came from the Uncommon Descent blog founded by Discovery Institute fellow William Dembski, who still frequently posts there. The reply, actually titled PZ Myers Throws Down the Gauntlet to Intelligent Design, was referring to the video getting featured on the well-known science blog of PZ Myers. To summarize the original video, the Discovery Institute was invited to present a single gene out of the billions of base pairs that have been sequenced in maybe 180 genomes that did not display signs of an evolutionary origin as a mechanism for supporting intelligent design. Your Uncommon Descent blog reply, which I've linked in the sidebar, I will summarize for brevity. It states that our video stumbled into what Philip Johnson called Bearer's Blunder. What is Bearer's Blunder? Well, it's basically Philip Johnson, quote mining and straw manning, a basic evolution versus creationism book. Yeah, I know, that's an awfully funny way of putting forward an argument for intelligent design. The quote mine reads, If you compare a 1953 and a 1954 Corvette side by side, then a 1954 and a 1955 model and so on, the descent with modification is overwhelmingly obvious. This is what paleontologists do with fossils, and the evidence is so solid and comprehensive that it cannot be denied by reasonable people. The blog then cites Philip Johnson's book. Of course, every one of those Corvettes was designed by engineers. The Corvette sequence, like the sequence of Beethoven's symphonies to the opinions of the United States Supreme Court, does not illustrate naturalistic evolution at all. It illustrates how intelligent designers will typically achieve their purposes by adding variations to a basic design plan. Above all, such sequences have no tendency whatever to support the claim that there is no need for a creator, since blind natural forces can do the creating. On the contrary, and I should state this is the important bit, they show that what biologists present as proof of evolution or common ancestry is just as likely to be evidence of a common design. That's from Philip Johnson defeating Darwinism by Opening Minds 97. Hmm. So what do you reckon the best way to respond to a quote mind straw man is? Well, first of all, I would like to say fantastic, Dembski, and I truly want to thank the Discovery Institute fellow. The blog you founded has just made an invaluable contribution. The quoting of Philip Johnson was priceless. Who is Philip Johnson? He is considered the father of the intelligent design movement, which rejects the theory of evolution and promotes intelligent design as an alternative. Johnson also denies that HIV is the sole cause of AIDS. I think we can safely assume that this is the absolute best that the Discovery Institute and the intelligent design community have to offer. Regrettably, the same design, same designer argument put forward by the father of intelligent design is also a staple mantra of the young earth creationists such as the convicted fraudster Kent Hovind. You know, chimpanzees and humans both have two eyes and both have right. similar color hair and both chew with their mouth open. So what does that prove? Well, it doesn't prove anything, but it no, can't, it can't well, it could be interpreted as common ancestor or it could be interpreted as common designer. Well, why do all motorcycles made by Suzuki, Honda, and everybody else have two wheels and all cars have four wheels? It's a, it's a common design. Right. Well, if I notice, uh, there's eight or ten different types of bridges in the world. There's the truss type, the suspension type. Right. The, okay. I notice all of them have similar uh, construction designs. They, they all start with a foundation. Right. Wow. That proves they're all evolving from spider webs. No, it has nothing to do with That's evolution. That's my point. Because these things, no, because a bridge is a horrible analogy to a living thing. The exactly, and evolution. they reproduce, which is one of the fundamental tenets of evolution. I mean, a thing can't evolve unless it reproduces. Here we're talking about reproducing systems. Okay, but my now, point explain is, to me what this has to do with a common designer, because I really don't get it. Hmm, Johnson, I'm beginning to think you might have a point with this same argument, same origin line of thought. But let's see why this same design, same designer argument falls short in biological systems. We know that reproducing organisms pass on DNA with modification. It is a central tenant of biological reproduction and it is the reason why paternity testing works. But how would the Discovery Institute view this? 
Well, first of all, they would use their Corvette analogy to suggest that a common design implies a common designer. After all, it is known that the Corvette design evolves due to designers' modifications. They would then suggest that this can be applied to biological systems and infer that shared genetic sequences between offspring and parents, you know, the sort of thing that is used for paternity testing, and I quote, is just as likely to be evidence for common design as it is to be evidence for you being the naturalistic offspring of your parents. The logical implication of Philip Johnson's argument is that you are just as likely to be a cut and paste by a designer with slight modification, after all that's how designers work, as you are to be the naturalistic offspring of your parents. So in summary, the Discovery Institute's actions demonstrate that they do not think that there is any merit in looking for genes with a non-evolutionary origin presumably due to their knowledge of the predominance of homology in genetics, and despite the past words of one of your current directors. So when we find information encoded in the DNA in, a, in this four-character digital code that is, that's responsible for all the instructions in the cell, it's, an, it's a, the logical inference uh, and explanation to say that an intelligent uh, agent of some kind played a role in the origin of, that, of those living systems. Instead, you invoke the same design same designer argument. Bravo! The Discovery Institute has apparently put forward an argument to contest the science of biological reproduction and paternity testing. Perhaps you should start advocating that we teach this controversy. Or maybe the strengths and weaknesses of this in schools too. Or perhaps you should have a campaign for the academic freedom of those who don't believe in paternity testing or get persecuted for rejecting sexual reproduction in favour of modification by designer. After all, these are the logical implications of the words of the founder of intelligent design. Greetings, my name is Casey Luskin and I'm here on behalf of Discovery Institute. Intelligent design theory is not the same as creationism. Intelligent design, which is different from creationism. Intelligent design is different from creationism? Are you sure about that, Luskin? Are you sure you don't want to just label all scientists just Darwinists and claim that it's all part of a conspiracy against you? Why then do some Darwinists keep trying to conflate intelligent design with creationism? In other words, the charge that intelligent design is creationism is a rhetorical strategy on the part of Darwinists who wish to delegitimize design theory without actually addressing the merits of its case. Just a rhetorical strategy? Oh, really, Luskin? Well, let's see what Dean Kenyon of the Discovery Institute, that's the same intelligent design agency you work for, described intelligent design and creationism in various drafts of his book of Pandas and People. In an early draft, he states that creation means that various forms of life began abruptly through the agency of an intelligent creator with their distinctive features already intact. Fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. In a later edition of the book, he states that intelligent design means that various forms of life began abruptly through an intelligent agency with their distinctive features already intact. Fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. Yeah, sure, Luskin, it's all just a rhetorical strategy by a conspiracy. This all came out in the Dover court case back in 2005, when a judge ruled on the crushing weight of the evidence that... In making this determination, we have addressed the seminal question of whether intelligent design is science. We have concluded that it is not, and moreover that intelligent design cannot uncouple itself from its creationist and thus religious antecedents. But wait, maybe I'm being unfair. Let's take a look at the interview with Luskin on Fox and Friends. Just watch as he nods in eager agreement as the host describes the conflict between creationism versus Darwinism as being white hot, all under the banner title of evolution versus creationism. To evolution in textbooks, the fight over how to teach the subject, evolution, should have been over, but some textbooks are still getting it wrong, raising the question, should the board be stripped 
of its power to choose textbooks. Joining us right now from the Discovery Institute, an organization that has been heavily involved in the Texas case, is Casey Luskin. Uh, good morning to you, Casey. Thanks for having me. Okay. Now, I, your problem, and the whole thing, creationism versus Darwinism, is, is uh, you know, white hot these days. You are, you, your main problem with science books is that they take a one-sided look at evolution, right? That's exactly right. Unfortunately, the vast majority... Ironically, back in 2007, Luskin published a paper in the Montana Law Review titled Intelligent Design Will Survive Kitzmiller vs. Dover. That's the court ruling I referred to earlier. The immediate irony being that neither Luskin's nor the Discovery Institute seem to have the conviction of their own words. Contrary to claims that you may have heard, we do not support the teaching of creationism, nor do we favor putting intelligent design, which is different from creationism, into the Texas science standards. And in fact, our position at Discovery Institute is that intelligent design should not be required or mandated. Although Discovery Institute does not advocate requiring the teaching of intelligent design in public schools, it does believe there is nothing unconstitutional about discussing the scientific theory of design in the classroom. Incidentally, Luskin, it really doesn't matter what the Discovery Institute believes is constitutional or not. It has already been ruled that intelligent design is just a rebranding of creationism. Your beliefs on the matter are simply an irrelevance here. Luskin's papers are, of course, an utter bore to read unless you fancy the sport of exposing creationists in Discovery Institute clothing. The disguise in this case is comically superficial, and one is spoilt for choice but one of the more obvious gems being the first line of the conclusions. The opinion of Kitzmiller is a misguided attempt on the part of a federal judge to settle a controversy over science and religion that properly belongs to practicing scientists and religious groups. Yeah, tell me again, Luskin, how intelligent design is a scientific theory and not just a rebranding of creationism. But it gets better. Luskin makes many Freudian slips like this. Creationism is much different. It is focused on defending a literal reading of the Genesis account, usually including the creation of the earth by the biblical God a few thousand years ago. <laughs> wow, Luskin. Creationism can only be defined as a literal interpretation of the biblical book of Genesis. But it gets even better than that. On Luskin's Discovery Institute page, he states that he is co-founder of the Intelligent Design and Evolution Awareness Center a non-profit helping students to investigate evolution by starting idea clubs on college and high school campuses across the country. And when you look at their webpage, it states that Idea Center Leadership, and yet that includes Luskin, believes that the identity of the designer is the God of the Bible. <laughs> Let me read that again. The Intelligent Design and Evolution Awareness Center's leadership, which includes Luskin, states that they believe that the designer is the god of the Bible, and yet Luskin will sit in front of a camera with a straight face and say, Unlike creationism, the scientific theory of intelligent design is agnostic regarding the source of design and has no commitment to defending Genesis, the Bible, or any other sacred text. Casey Luskin and the Discover Institute, welcome to your new home at Why Do People Laugh at Creationists. But let's take a look at your publication, shall we? First, the Journal of Church and State. Yeah, that's an interesting journal to put forward a case for intelligent design as science. Hmm, citation zero. That means that no one who read it deemed it important enough to mention. Hardly a hot article, is it, Luskin? But let's take a deeper look. Hmm, first and second search terms, creationism and intelligent design. Rather peculiar search terms for someone who thinks that they are entirely different. The abstract reads, review several laws to assess the ability to present creation science, intelligent design theory, or scientific criticism of evolution in public school districts in the US which have various teaching viewpoints. Restrictions faced by the teaching of creation science. Background on the Lemon Test, a judicial vehicle used by US courts to determine the constitutionality of teaching creation science. <laughs> creation science. Nature of intelligent design theory. 
Oh, single author paper, Casey. No one else to blame on this one. The second paper is actually a legitimate peer-reviewed science paper using methods such as Margon Margon dating of rocks about six million years old. Ah, uh, congratulations, Casey. You've not been a complete waste of skin. But really, Casey, maybe you should spend some of your effort trying to explain to young Earth creationists about radiometric dating. You know, this sort of thing. The dating methods that evolutionists rely upon to assign millions and billions of years to rocks are very inconsistent and based on unproven and questionable assumptions. Rather than sowing disinformation about evolution. Then lastly we come to the funniest of all of them. Progress in complexity, information and design. Come on, tell us about it Luskin. There is also now a peer-reviewed journal that focuses on design theory, progress in complexity, information and design, which has an editorial advisory board of more than 50 scholars from relevant scientific disciplines, most of whom have university affiliations. Now, not what you're thinking. That sounds suspiciously like a journal founded specifically by intelligent design creationists, simply so they could publish their pseudoscience. Well, yeah, sure, the webpage does look very amateurish, but let's not hold that against anyone. Editorial board headed by intelligent design proponentist and Discover Institute fellow William Dembski. Hmm, I wonder how many of the eight editions of the journal Dembski is published in. Uh, seven. But it gets better than that. The last edition of the journal was in 2005. Yep, that's right. No sooner had it been ruled in 2005 that intelligent design was just a rebranding of creationism and therefore couldn't be taught in US schools. The intelligent design movement abandoned its uh, peer-reviewed journal. Presumably it's a waste of time. Indeed, the last I heard, Dembski was teaching intelligent design at a Southern Evangelical Seminary. Ah, the Southern Evangelical Seminary. World-renowned for their peerless academic prowess and their state-of-the-art research facilities. However, ID proponentists of the Discovery Institute, such as Luskins here, are still intent on spreading disinformation on evolution. And while they do, why do people laugh at creationists will be only too happy to call them on it. Of about 180 life forms have already been sequenced. Yet you have not pointed to a single gene that you think shows signs of a non-evolutionary design. Please, we invite you to rock the foundations of evolutionary biology to its core. Simply provide evidence of a single gene from the billions of base pairs that have already been sequenced and that are scanned by drunk companies and geneticists on a daily basis that you think display the property of a non-evolutionary the most interesting thing to me personally is the discovery of the reams and reams of digital code that is in, that's stored inside uh, DNA and transmitted in RNA. And th these are features that we think are best ex explained by an intelligent cause rather than a purely undirected process. So when we find information encoded in the DNA in, a, in this four character digital code that is, that's responsible for all the instructions in the cell, it's, an, it's a, the logical inference uh, and explanation to say that an intelligent uh, agent of some kind played a role in the origin of that. Of the and specific or unique function. For the purposes of our test, let's consider homology defined as 20% protein identity over more than 100 amino acids. That's 1 out of 20 amino acids at each position, or 0.05 probability, raised to at least a power of 20, or less than 1 in 1 times 10 raised to the power of 28, chance of being a coincidence. That's a pretty low probability. We'll test that your protein is specific to those living systems. Since the intelligent design movement is dedicated to the search for intentional design of living things, I think it's time to give it a little test. Can anyone out there locate a gene that is unambiguously designed? Here's my challenge. Give me the name of a gene in any animal or plant that you think is designed. No fair cheating, let's stick to sequences found in nature, not transgenics and only organisms we have some sequencing data on. I will then test your gene using homologene and some other tools for two things. Homology for a certain function with OMIM database. 
We don't want some protein that is used lots of ways or it can't be part of an irreducibly complex structure. This shouldn't take you long. Feel free to throw out guesses. Leave the gene name in the comments and I'll post the results when I can. Dear Discovery Institute, so there you have it. You want to put forward intelligent design as a hypothesis in the scientific arena. That's fine. We have presented a cheap mechanism for you to provide evidence to support this. The genome 